Hey everyone, welcome back to the Texture Labs channel. So one of my favorite places to scrub through and look at artwork on my phone is not social media, it's this Just Watch Movies app. This is not a sponsored video or anything, I just love looking at the thumbnails and I bet 99% of these made their way through Photoshop in one way or another. They're all fighting for your attention and the very best ones are like little exercises in efficiency, a clear and specific image, maybe some single cool thing happening with the typography. So I thought I'd make a video where I try to work within that format. I want to use one photo photograph and focus on a single process to create an eye-catching image. I want to keep it simple, but I'm going to use a process that really asks us to stretch the way we think about color in Photoshop. Then we'll give the type some nice organic glowing effects with an approach that actually represents kind of a breakthrough in Photoshop for me, so I'm excited to share it with you guys. Let's get into Photoshop and get started. All right, in the first part of this video, I'm gonna take this black and white image and introduce all kinds of interesting colorful effects without actually putting any color on this or any other layer. Instead, we're gonna create some differentiation between the red, the green, and the blue channels, and that's gonna sort of magically generate color. It'll work like this. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, then double click on it and set this one to be just the red channel. You guys might've seen this before. If I transform this layer, it's kind of the go-to way to create this offset channel effect. So I'm flipping it horizontally and we get this red and cyan kind of symmetrical 3D look. It's a cool trick. We've separated the red from the green and the blue channels, but I do feel like I see this color palette used a lot and it has a very specific association with old fashioned 3D glasses. So let's change it up a little bit. I'm gonna make one more copy of this layer and on this one I'm going to set it to be the green channel but I'm going to bring the opacity down to 50% opacity. So what we've got is blue and half the green channel down here and red and half the green channel up here. Let's check out the channels individually. So red is flipped this way, blue is flipped the other way, and green is half and half. We can also visualize it like this. We separated the channels from each other, then split the green up and sprinkled half on each side. So we end up with, I think, a really cool blue and orange palette. And let's complicate things a little bit further. I'm gonna create a new layer, and it's just gonna be a black and white gradient. But then I'm gonna double click on the layer and set this one to be 50% opacity, and this one's gonna be just the blue channel. And we get some really awesome color variation going using just black and white layers. So where are all these colors coming from? Well, in a black and white image, the red, the green, and the blue values are equal on each pixel. But now that we've made each of these channels a little bit different from each other, the red, the green, and the blue values are not equal, and that results in colored pixels. So for example, we've taken this gradient and only applied it to the blue channel, meaning we've made some of the blue darker down here, which emphasizes the red and green channels, and we've amplified the blue up here, creating more blues and magentas. And yeah, it's a little bit tough to visualize how that works, but it's at least worth having a sense of the forces at work. And now that we're getting maybe a little bit more comfortable pushing the channels around, let's get even a little bit more experimental. So how about another layer with a gradient in it? This is gonna be a radial gradient, but I'm gonna set this layer to overlay. Kind of an old fashioned Photoshop trick, a radial gradient set to overlay, creates kind of a vignette and draws your eye toward the center of the image. But let's also mess with the channels on this one. So since we already put a gradient in the blue channel, let's turn off the blue channel for this one and leave it in the red and the green. Maybe bring down the opacity a little bit. So what does that mean when we use an overlay blending mode and we manipulate the channels? Well, it's actually not too crazy. It just means that in the red channel, we can see the overlay, just like a regular overlay. In the green channel, we can see it as well, but in the blue channel, it's totally absent meaning we've boosted the red and the green in the middle, giving us more of these green and orange tones, and we've darkened the red and the green out here, resulting in more blues and magentas. And it's this slight variation between the channels that adds up to give us all this awesome color. Kind of crazy to see five black and white layers and end up with this image. All right, in the second part of this video, I wanna create some nice organic glowing typography, but I'm gonna do it in a way that I can't believe I only just realized was possible in Photoshop, but I haven't seen anyone use this before. Let me know what you guys think. So let's get some type in here, and I think there is a movie called South of Heaven, but make no mistake, this is gonna be a movie based on Slayer's seminal 1988 album. All right, I'm gonna double click and open the layer style effects. So it's always really bothered me that most of these effects have some variation of a Gaussian blur, like this super fast, live, efficient blur. But every single one of these effects goes either inside the type or outside the type. And it always seemed like the capacity is here to have just a blur 
as a layer style effect, which would be really useful for glowing effects and all kinds of things. So what's the deal? Well, it turns out it's always just been a matter of checking the right box. So check this out. I'm gonna use the drop shadow effect, but let's make it more of a glow. So I'll switch it over to add mode, make it kind of an orangey color, and I'll even add a little bit of noise, maybe 5%. So it's a blurry effect, but it just goes outside of the shapes, right? The original layer still looks the same. Of course, we could bring the fill value on the layer down to zero, and that leaves just the drop shadow effect, but it's still just outside. Now there's a hole where the letters were, but we've got this little checkbox. Layer knocks out drop shadow. Turn it off, and we've suddenly got the whole blurry drop shadow. And yes, it's a live blur, and it's not some cheap looking box blur, it's actually a nice organic Gaussian blur, and it's even much faster to update than the Gaussian blur effect. So live type with basically a live blur, and if you're into creating glowing effects, you know the key to a nice glow effect is to have multiple blurs added together. And with drop shadow, we can do just that. We can add another drop shadow, basically another glow. This one's gonna be bigger, 50 pixels. And by changing the color, we can get some really cool color variation happening in the glow. One more drop shadow, this one's gonna be 100 pixels, and I'll change the color again, maybe go for a bright red glow. Now, another really cool thing about layer style effects is that you can mix and match blending modes all on a single layer. So these are all set to add mode, but I can create another drop shadow and set this one to multiply, and we have add and multiply happening at the same time. Now, Photoshop looks at these layer style effects just like it does regular layers. The ones that are on top sit on top, just like layers in the layer panel. And sometimes to make a glow stand out on the background, you wanna darken the background a little bit. So let's maybe bring this multiply drop shadow down to the bottom and I'll switch it over to linear burn. That's a little bit more dramatic way to darken the background. So pretty cool, multiple blending modes on the same layer and we end up with a nice organic glow effect happening. It's very easy to adjust and you can even still change fonts or adjust the typography. All right, well, since it's the Texture Labs channel, I'm just gonna sneak in a little bit of texture on top of this whole image. Yeah, I'm kind of breaking my simplicity rule here, but this is kind of a dirty fingerprints lens glass texture that I shot. It's a new texture on the Texture Labs site, and it's, of course, free like everything else. However, if you appreciate all the free stuff, I would certainly appreciate your support. A huge thank you to everyone who has supported the Texture Labs project on Patreon. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.